I've always wanted to fly a raven. And on the evenings, when I take my hour's walk with my biggest dog, we go through the college campus, Valley College, and I would recite uh, each day until I finally got the whole thing. Uh, so it, visualize, if you will, a 19th century room somewhere with a sad, dispirited older man who has lost the love of his life. Sitting there nodding over his books, trying to forget. Oh, yeah. And then this happens. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly. As if someone were gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. It is some visitor, I muttered, rapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember. It was in the bleak December. And each separate dying ember brought its ghost on the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden in the angel's name, Lenore. Nameless here, evermore. And the silent, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me. Filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating. Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger. Hesitating then no longer, sir, said I, or madam, Truly, your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping. And so, so softly you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce were sure I heard you. Here, I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering. Long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken. The stillness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Really this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber, turning all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is someone at my window lattice. Let me therefore see what that is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open then, I flung the shutter. When? With many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made him, not a minute stopped nor stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance of the boy. Thou crest be shorn and shaven, 
Thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly, grim, and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Much I marveled, this ungainly bird, to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy more. But we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast, upon the sculpted bust above his chamber door with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the glassy bust, spoke only that one word, as though his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, Till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless said I what it utters is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his fate, that melancholy bur burden of never, nevermore. But the raven, still beguiling all my fancies into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then, upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking, what this ominous bird of yore, this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking, nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head and knees reclining on the cushion's velvet lining, with the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining, with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press. Ah, oh, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser. Perfumed from an unseen censer swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee respite, respite in the penthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, never. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate, but all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil. By that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow maiden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven. Never more be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked of starting, get thee back into the tempest in the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, never more. And raven, never flitting, 
still is sitting, still is sitting on the placid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. And the lamplight all him streaming cast his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore.